everybody. Welcome back to the part-time homestead. So today is the first day, day one, of our incubation three ways trial. So I'm anticipating this video to take me over two months to make, but you're gonna see it in probably less than 20 minutes. And it's gonna take me a while to make this because I am going to incubate probably about 100 eggs and I don't get 100 eggs every week especially at least the ones I want to hatch. So these are just gonna strictly be white Sussex eggs, or light Sussex eggs, and um, uh, black Marans, and a Wheaton Maran. And those are the eggs that I've selected to incubate and expand my flock with those birds. I, I like those birds. So, what is the incubation three ways trial video that I'm going to show you? So if you've watched any of my videos, my experience with incubating eggs has been hit and miss. Um, primarily the biggest issue that I have is the birds pipping at the end where they get stuck in the egg and don't complete the hatching process. And most of the time you have to help them out of the shell. And everybody's comments are always the same. You didn't have the humidity high enough. Well, if you're new to incubating eggs and you go into lockdown on day 18, you fill up all the water chambers. I mean, how much more humidity can you possibly do without adding cups in your incubator, you know, with more water? And I tend to believe them. It seemed like, you know, they were getting shrink wrapped and getting dried and it was a lack of humidity. However, the caveat to that was I've seen people talking about dry incubation. Now I don't know if this has been around for a while or if I just ran into it on YouTube, but I did a very, very small trial on my last video incubating eggs where I ran a dry incubator and I got a hatch. And um, technically that shouldn't happen. Uh, if humidity is the problem, there is no way that that bird should have hatched out of there with no water in the incubator. Now it's impossible to have no humidity. If there's humidity in the air and depending on where you live, that's all going to be different. I'll tell you right now, I live in California. It's a very mild climate. I'm sure I have humidity, uh, but not much like if you lived in a southern state. So here in California, we're going to run this trial. Trial number one, incubator number one. This is going to be the dry incubation process. I'm going to add no water during the first 18 days and no water after lockdown going to be completely dry. Trial number two, same thing, another Hova Bader incubator. This is the Hova Bader 2370. There's going to be an egg turner in this one. This one doesn't have an egg turner, but depending on how long I take to collect eggs, I may transfer the egg turner over. So completely dry during the process and during lockdown. The second trial on this one will be a hybrid version of a wet dry. So the first 18 days is going to be dry, and then I'm going to fill this thing up with water on lockdown to try to keep it as moist as possible, or as humid as possible. The third trial is going to be the standard, which everybody recommends in this incubator over here, the Nurture Right 360. I'm going to do it like normal, 50% humidity for the whole 18 day period, and then I'm going to fill it up to try to keep it at 70 or higher during the lockdown process. And we're going to compare results. At day 10, on every one of these processes, we're going to take the eggs out and candle them to see if we're getting development. Remove the eggs that aren't developing so we have a solid number to go by at the end of what's hatching and what's not. It's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. And uh, I'm doing this from my knowledge and my experience because I just stress about the water and the humidity levels. And if this dry run hatches better than those other two runs, I don't know what to tell y'all. Um, but anyways, let's get to it. Let's get these eggs in the incubator for my dry run. It's currently heating up and I've got the hobobator in it. Now, there's also been a lot of people that says, oh, you can't keep your eggs for more than three days or four days. And I've stored these in a cool room. Let's see, the first collection date was on the 12th or currently the 20th. This is eight days ago. So those will be the last eggs I put in there. We're gonna start with the ones that I collected today. I wrote the dates on all these eggs that I've collected. You can see I got a 20 on there. 
because this one was collected today. Unlike my previous video or my very first video, they are going with the fat side up in the egg turner. All right, and these egg turners hold one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times seven it looks like forty-two eggs. So these lighter color ones are from the Light Sussex. The dark ones are from the Copper Marons or Black Marons, whatever you prefer. And some of these I'm probably not going to. This one's looking a little small and discolored. I'm going to set him aside. All right. And I'm going to throw a 12. Eight days ago, that's a big egg right there. I'm going to throw that one in there just to see if we get development. See how it goes. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, seven. 42 eggs. All right. Dry incubation. Dry incubation. Trial begins on the 20th of March. So the simple thing about this one is I have nothing to do. There's an egg turner turning the eggs. I'm not adding water. I'm not tracking humidity. Count 18 days. I don't even count 18 days because there's no lockdown. Or actually I have to, yeah. Because I have to remove the eggs from the incubator on day 18 for the hatch. I mean from the the egg turner. They can't stay in the egg turner. So I have to remove the egg turner on day 18. But other than that, this is set it and forget it. If this works out, this is going to just be a game changer. It'll make things so much easier. Alright, All right, there's incubator number one. So I will be collecting eggs now. 42 more eggs to put in the hybrid wet-dry process. But I'm probably going to start the normal process first. That gives me more time to remove the turner from this one to that one. All right. Okay, so we're all set to do the second version or second way of incubating the eggs here. Incubator number one is incubating dry eggs with an egg turner. No water in that incubator at all. Second one here, we're going to do as normal or as prescribed by anything that you read will tell you to do it this way, which is 50% humidity for the first 18 days and then 70 plus for the last three days on lockdown. So I've been collecting eggs for a few days. I got them marked with the dates. Today is the 24th. These are the eggs I collected today. 24. They've been in here for several hours. The ones I collected today, fat side up. The other ones have been in there for a couple days. So. The oldest egg I have here is the 20th, which would put it at four days old. You can see that? And if it fits in here, I'll use it. If not, I'm gonna go from the 21st, from the 21st to the 24th. So let me get these eggs in here. And I wanted to address something that I did a review on this incubator. This is the Nurture Right. Nurture Right 360 from Harris Farms. I did a review on this incubator. And somebody asked me a question about how do you know when the water is full and I said well it's got an overflow on it. Well it does have an emergency overflow to keep the eggs from getting wet but it overflows to the outside chamber around here which is not typically supposed to hold water it's kind of like an emergency and it has two holes on each side right here at the bottom but it's not a typical water storage chamber so if it's in there you've got way too much water in there. The only way to tell is if the water is at the top right here where you fill it in if you can touch the water right there it's full um, other than that there's really no way to tell you have to be able to see the water right there or touch the water right there same thing for chamber a chamber b is for lockdown for the last three days chamber a you keep full for the first 18. so i'm just going to go ahead and real quickly check out these eggs and put them in so my 24s, so it looks like that 20th egg is going to be 
not going in. I'm gonna go ahead and wash this one off. This has got quite a bit of crud on there. I'll wash this off. She's all cleaned up. And there we go. So this egg on the 20th, it's kind of a weird looking egg. It's dark right there and lighter on this side. So it's kind of cool, but fortunately that's probably gonna go in the compost pile. All right, so we got our eggs in here. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this incubator in, put water in it, let it uh, heat up and get balanced, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like, where we're at with temperature and humidity wise. But uh, if you haven't seen my review, go ahead and watch that video, my review on this incubator. I'm a fan of it. Uh, lots of people like it, some people don't like it. But uh, yeah, check out my review and see what you think. Okay, so this is day 10 of the trial incubation processes. The dry incubator, the traditional or as directed, the 50% humidity, 70% humidity. So this is a normal incubation here. This is the dry and I have not started the combination one yet, which is gonna be 18 days of no water and then I'm gonna put water in there for the lockdown. So I just wanted to show you that even though I'm running this incubator dry with no water, there is humidity in the air always, depending on your location, it will vary, but it's 34% humidity in this incubator with no water. So today being day 10, we're gonna candle these eggs on the candler with this incubator to see if we have any development. We'll remove the eggs that don't have no development and we'll leave the ones in there to give us better uh, numbers or better results, not results, but you know. I'm gonna try to do this quickly. Cannot see. Somebody was uh, in one of my commenters on my videos was saying that they didn't like it because it doesn't hold temperature. This thing has been spot on on 99.5 and 55% humidity pretty much the whole time of incubation so far. So, I don't know. The proof will be in the pudding, I guess. We'll see at the end. It is time for the hybrid trial in my Hovabator, second Hovabator incubator. This is going to be a hybrid trial. First 18 days, no water. And then on lockdown, I'm gonna fill all the chambers up with, with water. So, just to recap. Dry run, normal run, and the hybrid run. So I've been collecting eggs for quite a bit now. Just gonna put them in here. These were collected today. I'm gonna fill this up. So these eggs are up to eight days old. So we may have a lot of non-viable eggs at this point. But again, when you only got six chickens laying approximately four to five eggs a day, it takes a while to get enough to fill your incubator. So it'll be an experiment in that portion too to see if any of the older eggs hatch or if just the fresher, newer ones hatch. I was wondering about that light color on the top of that egg right there. All right, there we go, 49, 49 eggs. <laughs> I'm a hybrid run. All right. Then I have to. Uh, 
just a little bit. Pull this one out here just a little bit. All right. So I've got the temperature dialed in pretty much on this one over here. I've been running these two external temperature probes on this plus the one on there. So I've got it pretty well dialed into where I want it. So I'm going to remove these and put it in the this one over here that I just started to get help me get that temperature dialed in. Done. This is your standard 50-70 run right here, 50% humidity on the first 18 days and 70 on lockdown. And this is going to be your first 18 days of dry run and then 70% plus on lockdown. We'll see how they do. Alright, hey everyone. So getting excited, today is lockdown for my dry run over here. So since I only have one egg turner, I'm going to go from the dry run to the wet dry run over here. Swap the egg turner and take it out of here for the lockdown. Now, actually I wouldn't have to do anything for the lockdown period on the dry run because there's no humidity in there so I'm not adding any more water. I'm not monitoring that whatsoever. But I do have to take them out of the egg turner so they can hatch. And I'm tired of turning these ones by hand so I'm gonna add it in there. But we are getting close to see if anything happens with these dry run chicken eggs. Um, I know a lot of people swear by this dry run, not adding any water with low humidity and hatching it goes just fine, but I have a funny feeling that these birds are going to need help pipping out of the egg shells. So we'll be ready for that with water and Q-tips and to help them if we need. But uh, yeah, so let me get this done. Whoa. Sorry about that, little chickadee. Yeah, so no water. Maybe I'll just turn those ones by hand. What do you think? I'm gonna get rid of this one. This one's. Yeah. Oh, nope. It's got a developing chicken there. It's gonna have to stay. So we got the Chinese fire drill all done, dry run, lockdown, three days. Within three days, these guys should be hatching. These guys are about a week in, maybe, yeah, about five days in on the wet dry run. Okay, so there we go. Now I got it all situated with the cords so I can rotate those ones that are not in the egg turner. Alright, so once again, this is a hybrid run, so first 18 days are going to be dry, then I'm going to add water to get it to about 50% humidity during hatching. Dry run, we'll get the results from this one first, well you'll get them all at the same time, but I'll get to see this first. And then this is the traditional run with the 50-70% humidity in the Nurture Right 360. <clears throat> all right. Okay, so this is only my second time using this incubator, but I wanted to show you a problem that I just noticed is these eggs here are sitting in vertically, so they're sitting like this. This egg here and one on the other side is sitting like that. 
and when you when it rotates, you can see this egg. It is not rotating. Look, it's occurring again right here. Let's see what this one does. Look at that one. Oh, it's it just rolled completely over. So depending on the size of the eggs, this may or may not be rotating them very accurately. The majority of them are all still good. I didn't have any problems in the last run. I just noticed it now. So it's something to be aware of when you're considering this incubator. Okay, so it's time for this guy to go into lockdown. This is the standard incubation process or the highly recommended incubation process or the normal incubation process whatever you want to call it the 50 70 incubation process so this has been at 50 percent humidity i don't know can we get a look can we get a look see oh, bear with me here see that 55 percent humidity and 99.5 So that is where that one has been for 18 days now. So we're gonna put this incubator into lockdown. Um, the timer didn't work on this. Um, I know this isn't a review for this incubator, but while I have you guys here, I did do a review on this. And if you watch that video, something a little addition to this is it says in the instructions when you unplug the power that the timer resets to 21 days the factory preset 21 days is for eggs uh, i unplugged the power several times for long periods of time and the countdown did not reset so i had to automatically set it and i lost track so it's not even set accurately but let's go ahead and give you show you how to do that dun, dun, dun. So I'm gonna actually to pull it out of here. Okay, so I pulled the incubator out so I can work with it easier and also show you how to do the timer. So uh just press the menu button to see how many days you have left, which is seven. That's not accurate because I forgot the date that I started. But I do have it written down and I know that today is day 18. You press the plus and minus button to get the egg thing to rotate. And there's, right? Now, to reset the timer, get it to your timer. All right, sorry. Go to timer, hold down the menu button. Okay, so actually you don't have to go be on the timer, you just hold down the menu button. There you go, you can get to day, right? And then you can set it here. So I know we have three days left, right? So that's supposed to automatically shut off the egg turner because it, it stops when you have three days left. But I'm not going to chance it. And I had a, a viewer say that I should take it out the last time. I left it in because I wanted to keep the eggs separate when they were hatching. But, you know, one of my viewers recommended I take it out. So I'm going to give it a shot this time. So I just kind of want to do this really quick. I'm going to take the lid off, remove the egg turner, and then we're going to get the water, the humidity level up. So lid off. This egg turner should just lift right out of here. Well, okay. So these big eggs, that's not going to cut the mustard. The turner is not going to slip through those. Look at that, that's weird. I think I'm in danger here. We're dropping some of these eggs. Okay.
Okay. Egg turner out. There we go. Lids on there nice and tight. And there it is. I've got some warm water here. So we're going to remove section B and we're going to fill that up. So before I get too full, I want to set it back up on my shelf right here. I don't want to be spilling any water. There you go. So we're back on the shelf and just fill this up with water. Now the cool thing I liked about this incubator was I don't have to take that lid off to control the humidity. So even if this water does run low in the next three days, I can just add more water, real simple. Simple and easy. All right, it's been about an hour since I locked it down. It's stabilized 99.5 and 70% humidity. So just keep an eye on them and keep both A and B full. Now if I need to get that higher, I would just close this a little bit more. If I need it less, I would just open it up a little bit more to control the humidity. All right. Okay, as you can see, we're locked down 99.5, same temperature all the way through, and I've raised the humidity to 70%. So, and today is day 20. And right there, we have our very first pipper. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this in the next day or two. Let's see how it turns out. This is it, lockdown for the hybrid process, which has <laughs> these spider webs on it. I haven't uh, done anything with this incubator for the first 18 days completely dry well you know just whatever the humidity is no water added and it's day 18 time for lockdown just gotta take the egg turner out add the water right here warm water and try to do this as quickly as possible try this up with water Well, there's a little section in the middle which is not a water channel, but I'm going to fill it up anyways. We're going all out with water in this one. Alright, so that was a pretty good amount of water. Let's set this in here. Like that. Get the eggs back in there as quickly as possible. 48, 49 bad boys, 49 bad boys in there, all right, so there we have it, oh, I'm sorry about that, so 49 eggs in the hybrid process, and in all honesty, both me and my wife did not even want to add water to this incubator. Um, you're all seeing this at the same time, but we witnessed the results of the dry run and the wet run. <clears throat> and we wanted to just do this one dry. But for the experiment, for the purposes of the experiment, we're going to do it, as I stated before, to try to keep to the trial to make sure that that wet, one, wet run just wasn't a fluke. But um, 
yeah, we're gonna see how this does and uh, hopefully we get some more baby chickens in a few days. All right, so I'll see you in a few days. Okay, it's hatch day for the Nurture Right 360. I got one chicken. This guy's almost hatched out and one pipping right there on day 21. This one, at this moment, looks like this whole process is taking a little bit longer and going much slower. It's not nearly as uniform as the dry run, but you know, that's just what I'm observing right now. I have to wait till the end of the experiment to give you the full analysis. But yeah, hatch day, day 21. These, this guy was the one that started pipping last night. So hopefully these guys turn it on here real quick. I don't know. All right, it's time to get into this incubator. Container to store the chickens in. I need to examine the eggs and see what's going on in here. This is day 22 in the evening, going on day 23 for tomorrow. And I was. At this point, I'm pretty disappointed. So we're still maintaining constant temp and the humidity is a little bit high right now. But I'm gonna take these chickens out here, inspect the eggs, see what's going on. One, two, so just these three. So that chicken got dried, it's all stuck. I'm gonna take care of him in a minute. I'm gonna remove some of these shells. Check out these eggs for pipping. That's weird. So I don't see no pipping any of these other eggs, which is just crazy. Yeah, none of these other eggs are pipping. Alright, I'm going to keep this guy warm. I'm going to have to deal with him in a minute. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to moisten him up with some warm water, get him cleaned up, see if he'll survive. But i got to take these three out and I'm going to put them with the other birds. So. Where are you guys at? Just three. From this incubator so far. Okay, so I just got done trying to doctor that chick up and get some of the stickiness off of him. But I'm gonna have to say, it's day 22, as I said. I'm pretty disappointed in the outcome of this process. Um, I really don't know what to say right now. I pulled it off, three chickens hatched, they're doing well, they're in the brooder. This one chicken got shrink wrapped or the stuff stuck around him and he's not doing so hot. None of these other eggs are even pipping and it's day 22. So, yeah, a little concerned. Today is day 21 of the dry run right here. And these guys started pipping about 30 hours ago. And I'm quite surprised, quite impressed actually about the, the results. So I've looked in here and I don't see anybody else pipping. There's several eggs that are just sitting there, but I can't tell if anybody's pipping or not. So the plan is open this up, remove the birds that have hatched, examine the eggs for anybody that's pipping. If they are, I got some water and some Q-tips. I'll moisten up that membrane so they don't get shrink wrapped. And if nobody's pipping, then I'll just leave the eggs in there for a few more days and see what happens. So you guys ready to see the results of the dry run? Check this out. Look at that. That is crazy. So, one, 
two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. 17. And then we've got this one. It's not picking yet. No pips on this one. That one. Nothing going on here. Here. Still quite a few eggs, but there's no activity on those. So I'm just going to pull out all these shells. And now get the lid back on this incubator, and we'll watch those, see what the results are in a couple days, another day or two. But for now, I'm going to take these guys out and get them under the heat light in the brooder. Day 22. It's been more than 24 hours since the first chicken hatched. I'm going to open it up, take a count, remove the birds, examine the eggs. Check for anyone that's pipping, anybody who's not. We either help them out or put them back in the incubator for another day. Hopefully, do this as quick as possible. Yes, it's on it. Can you take that egg off? Ooh. Yeah. Did you get it off? Oh, this one's still wet. Did he die? I don't know. No. Maybe we should leave him in the incubator for a while. Yeah, we should. Okay, so take out the shells. you a little bit. We're going to let you dry off in there a little bit more. Pull out this thermometer. Let it dry. Alright, we're going to take these guys out. Alright, good morning everyone. So this morning, we are going to take a look at the eggs that did not hatch out of the incubators. Now, I did this experiment to determine the effectiveness of the process. Um, so what I'm looking for today is development in the eggs. If I crack these eggs open, they look like a normal egg with a yolk with no development. I'm not really going to hold it against the incubator. That could either be a storage issue, um, a fertilization issue, or something else. But if the eggs are developed and they uh, died mid-process or didn't hatch, then that's going to go against the incubator. So we're going to start with the dry one. Now these two went in four days apart, so we're going to examine them at the same time. I left these in the incubator for... 29 days and these for 25 days. This is the dry run, no water. This is the standard run, the wet run with a 50 70 humidity rate. So let's take a look. This one first. All right. Don't worry about that. Or this. Okay, so here we go. This egg feels pretty light. There's 
so. I don't know, there's no blood or no veins in that one. This one had a chick in it. So this one definitely gets held against the incubator. So this one developed, developed, did not hatch. Man, this one's got a thick skin. Yep, here we go, another one. This one has a chick in it. Died somewhere mid-development, did not hatch. Okay. This one has nothing. It's another regular egg. Again, nothing in that one. No development, no blood. Oof. Uh, this one, that one's got, uh, I'm gonna say nothing on that one because they've been in here for so long. And here, I believe this is another chicken. So, three eggs that developed partially and did not hatch in the dry run. Out of 41 eggs now on this one at day 10 I candled them and I removed a bunch of eggs that were not developing on day 10 with candling the ones I left in here were I couldn't determine at day 10 um, so I left them in till the very end so if you ask me at this point that's a pretty good uh, that's pretty good so we're gonna set that aside, and we're gonna go on to the 360, which was the standard run. Standard wet run. Now, I, ha I did not remove any eggs at candling. That's why there's a lot more eggs in here, because I did not remove any. Let's take a look here. Yep, nothing. nothing up oh, there's an egg this one has a chicken in it it did not hatch nothing nothing these are wet up oh, there's an undeveloped egg so we're gonna count that one against the incubator. That one died real young. Barely, just little embryo, just an eye. Nothing, huh? That could have been something right there. Okay, I think. Yep, we have a chicken here. That one died real early in the process too. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Nothing on that one. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. I think my roosters need to get get to working nothing there nothing there and nothing there so uh, three eggs in the standard wet process also didn't hatch all right Uh, there was 22 eggs in here. We had uh, three hatch, and we got three 
that it did not develop. So we're going to wait until the last, uh, the mixed run comes out and we'll tally all the results and we'll give them a score, see how it goes. So this is what's left of the hybrid run and it's been 23 days. I took the rest of the chickens out. There was 49 eggs in here to begin with and uh, this is what's left. So I gotta go through and crack these eggs and see how many developed and how many didn't so we can get our totals lined up and get the, get the results in. <clears throat> All right, so there was five non-hatchers in the hybrid, in the hybrid run. So now that we've got our totals, Calculate it up. <clears throat> All right, the results are in from the incubation process trial. So, nothing scientific about this test. I'm just one homesteader who hatches chickens, and hopefully, you're watching this. You're just another homesteader or another person who hatches chickens, and we all have issues. If you've watched any of my videos before, you'll know that my biggest issue is uh, not fully pipping. They begin to pip. Those are like the hardest losses. You know, you, you see the baby chicken, it's struggling to get out, you wanna help it, and you do or you don't open the incubator during the lockdown process for that. Um, the ones that don't develop, you know, they just don't develop. I mean, natural causes, whatever. It wasn't fertile to begin with. Um, Non-starters is what we're gonna call them, so. For this experiment, I've removed the non-starters from the percentage. I'm only using the percentage of the eggs that developed versus hatched. So for example, on my dry run, I started with 41 eggs. Only 21 were quote unquote viable. So the rest of them were just yolks and I'm gonna use 21 as the total number of eggs, not 41. Um, because you know maybe the rooster wasn't fertilizing them it's it's for the purposes of this experiment we're not going to use any of those eggs that did not develop all right so the results are in so what do you guys want to hear first uh, I think you're gonna be just as surprised as I was um, so I am surprised um, but I'm also I also have more questions about to what's really going on so if you know, um, anytime I get a chicken that doesn't hatch or I'm asking about it, the number one comment is there wasn't enough humidity. There wasn't enough humidity. That's why they're shrink wrapping. Well, the results are in and they say something a little bit different. So let's go with the dry run first. So I started with 41 eggs but there was only 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 viable eggs. Out of the 21 viable eggs, 17 hatched, one shrink wrapped, and three died in the egg. That's an 80% hatch rate. 17 out of 21 is 80% hatch rate. Um, the one that got shrink wrapped, it didn't even look like it was pipping. It just looked like a piece of the shell had broken off it had a little hole in it and we didn't notice it and by the time we went to check the eggs right before we were ready to shut it down we noticed it we helped the bird out uh, it eventually died i think it was in the egg for too long so that was an unfortunate shrink wrapping and that was a dry run and you know common sense would i mean it just makes me feel like if you're not putting any water in and humidity was the issue that they all would have shrink wrapped they would have been dry as get up but 80% hatch rate is pretty dang good. As a matter of fact, that's the best hatch rate I've ever gotten. So the results for the wet run, but we'll leave that, we'll leave that to the last. Um, that's the standard 50-70 run. So the hybrid run, there was no water in that for the first 18 days, and then I loaded it up with water at the end. So we had 23 viable eggs, and out of those 23 viable eggs, 18 hatched, there was no shrink wrapped. Um, five did not hatch out of the out of the 23. 
that's a 78% hatch rate. Not too shabby, but that's also interesting like, you know, that's a total opposite humidity situation for the lockdown period. We went from zero humidity in lockdown or, or basic, you know, standard, whatever your 30% or in, in the atmosphere is, to like a lot of humidity and we got pretty dang close to the same hatch rate. The interesting one is the standard run, the 50-70 run. We had seven viable eggs out of 22, seven viable eggs. Now, all these eggs were taken from the same chickens, the same birds, very close to the same time period. This trial ran for approximately two months, so it was very short, you know, within a several weeks that these chickens, these eggs were collected from the same birds, right? So seven viable eggs in there. Three hatched, one shrink wrapped, and three non-hatched. That's a 43% hatch rate, 43%. That is dismal, dismal. So the best hatch rate was the dry run, the second best was the hybrid run, and the standard 50% humidity for 18 days and 70% humidity for lockdown did the poorest. And there's one other thing I got to mention. My wife is a big fan of the dry run, and the reason being is this. this look at it. Oh. Gosh, look at this. Oh. <laughs> yes. Look at this mess. This thing is nasty. Gnarly. Smelly. It's disgusting. It stinks. It's miserable to clean. And your chickens are living in that for 24 to 48 hours while you're waiting for everybody to hatch. That can't be good for the birds. I mean, I wouldn't want to breathe that nastiness for 24 hours. So that being said, it is what it is. It's not a scientific experiment. I hope you got something for this. I'm recommending give a dry run a try. See how it works for you. Um, I'm a fan and from this point forward, I'm gonna be doing dry runs unless something crazy comes up and I get a 0% hatch rate. So there you have it.